Hi, I'm Arthur Motes, and I'm here to talk to you about the Motes Theory of Life and the amazing Father's Day sale that we have going on, ladies and gentlemen. So, leading up to Father's Day, if you purchase Motes Theory of Life, my new book, you can buy one and get the next one half off. I mean, this is a chance to help your father become a better person of impact and inspiration. You do not want to miss this opportunity. So, with that being said, MotesTheory.com is the place to go. You do not want to miss out, baby. What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Mooks Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Mooks, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, bro? Chilling, man. How are you? Good. Yeah. Morning wake-up call here. I like it, man. You know, we got to switch it up every once in a while, man. Get the people that thing early. I Bam. Agree. I agree with you. I mean, they're probably not going to get it. Oh, well, they will get it earlier. Earlier. Yes. yes. Middle of the day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little, little, little afternoon delight. Yeah, exactly. Need that. So, yeah, with things starting to transition with the virus, we're, yeah, we're transitioning a little bit. Absolutely. Get, get Yellow phase over here in Pennsylvania, you know? So, getting, this is good. Getting that morning, I don't want to say radio show feel, maybe morning podcast feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw it out with morning podcast. Don't disrespect what we got going on. Yeah, because this isn't radio show. Nah, nah, nah. That's for, that's for suckers. <laughs> <laughs> we do radio. Come on, son. What are you talking about? <laughs> Man, so how did you did you do anything this weekend, man, to celebrate the yellow phase? I went golfing. You can, okay? I like it, bro. Went golfing, didn't play too well. Lost to my buddies. Yeah, it is what it is, though. It was, okay, it was good just getting out there, having absolutely having bro. a few brews and and playing golf, hitting links. I like so it. So that's that's how I enjoyed it. Didn't yeah, you, man. Uh, I had, I had uh, one of my friends come over with his family. You know, had the kids playing together, bounce house, cooking on the grill, ton of drinks. It was an awesome day, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Felt thinking Felt in that good, time, man. and you're probably thinking in in your time with with your friends and everything. You're just like, this just feels right. It this, does. I'm, I've been missing this, and hopefully, we don't have to go back yeah. to what was. Bro, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it felt so good. I was like, I can't go back. It's over. It's, I'm not going back. <sighs> Maybe a little learning experience for us. Hey man, appreciate the little things. Ex- exactly. Appreciate the little things, man. Exactly. But speaking of the little things, it's been some little things. Buzzing around, man. People been talking about some things, especially in the NFL world, man, when it comes to minority coaches. So this past week started to be there was a report coming out that the NFL is proposing a new minority rule. So everybody's familiar with the Rooney rule. Rooney rule states that, you know, each team, when they're going through the hiring process of coaches or GMs, they mandatorily have to interview at least one minority candidate. Now, when you look at the success of the Rooney rule, people are viewing it right now as kind of, I mean, I don't want to say a failure, but it's not really good when you look at the amount of uh, NFL teams there are versus the amount of minority coaches. And when you're looking at the way that some of the people had presented why they were going in different directions, at first, they kept saying that the reason why we hired this guy as a head coach because he had coordinator experience. But then after a while, it started becoming that these guys didn't even have to have coordinator experience. They were hiring quarterbacks, coaches, they were hiring yep. special teams coaches as head coaches, guys who haven't been in a head coach or coordinator role before were getting head coaching nods over minority candidates. Also at the GM position, same, similar concept, things like that. So this offseason, the NFL said, you know, what, we got to do something to try to incentivize the hiring of minorities to get a little more diversity in the NFL when it comes to head coaches and GMs, because I think right now it might be four active head coaches that are minorities with Ron Rivera, Mike Tomlin, um, Anthony Lynn, Anthony Lynn, and who am I? I feel, I feel like I'm forgetting one person. Jeez. Might be one person. Okay. I'm forgetting. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Three or yeah. four. It, it, it tops. There you right. go. Yeah. So when you factor in all of that and then from a GM standpoint as well, it wasn't looking really good in terms of a diversity, in terms of, you know, having multiple ethnicities represented in the coaching ranks in terms of head coaches and uh, GMs. Now, mm-hmm. there are a ton of minority position coaches, but not the head coach or GM status. So what the NFL said they were going to do is, or what they're proposing is if you hire a minority head coach, then once he's on, once he's the coach for two years, going into that second season, your team in the third round will move up six spots in the draft. So if you were picking 10th in the third round, you will move up to the fourth spot. Okay, Mm -hmm. so just to put it in context for the third round, then they also said that if you hire a minority GM, 
going into that second year, you move up 10 spots in that third round. So obviously, if you're picking at 10, you'll be picking at one in the third round. And then they said if you hired a minority GM and a minority head coach in the same year and they stayed on for two years, whether you're moving up 16 spots in the third round, which is very, very significant. We already know the difference of a player between the first pick in that round versus the 16th pick in that round. Yeah. So those are some of the things that they're proposing the NFL does in terms of incentivizing organizations to hire minorities in these more prominent roles. So I guess I'll go first. I mean, I like the gesture in terms of them trying to figure out ways to get more minority coaches, to get more diversity in that element. I do think that it's something that needs to be done in terms of finding ways to bring more diversity like that because this is, uh, I mean when you look at the the NFL and how it's represented from a minority standpoint the minorities are the majority when it comes to the player ranks but when it comes to the coach ranks is drastically different I mean it's less than what what one two percent maybe in terms of minority coaches or GMs in those roles so I definitely think that it's something that needs to be addressed in terms of the method ah, I still got mixed feelings on it like, I, I understand you want to make it extremely sweet, right? You want to make this deal just so beautiful that if you're the owner, you're saying, you know what? Yeah, we're taking this guy. But then at the same time, I'm hesitant on it because I feel like it would cheapen the move. Mm-hmm. If I bring you on, now it's going to come off as I'm only doing this so I can get these draft picks or, yeah. or move up in the draft. And that's it. Not because you're qualified. And right. that was my biggest issue with it. Because I think that's how it is going to come off, especially that first go round when they first do these hires. If this rule gets passed, because like I said, the NFL has proposed it and they haven't voted on it just yet. But if it were to get passed, I think that first set of coach or GMs that are minorities that do get hired, that's going to be the, well, they only hired them because of this. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's all they're going to talk about in the third round of that draft when they get moved up. Look at right here, man. And it's almost like this is my token minority right here. And I I just feel some type of way no, about definitely. that part. Definitely. Because at the end of the day, you just want to pick the best guy. Right. And you're hoping mm -hmm. me coming in from a fan's perspective, mm -hmm. seeing some of the stuff that, that's been going on, even even back this offseason when yeah. people were talking about some of the coaches were getting hired and like Eric Bieniemy wasn't getting mm -hmm. hired and like Stephen A. first take talking about, hey, does the NFL have a problem yeah. with hiring minority or coaches? Or even Lewis Riddick. Lewis Riddick right. as a GM, I mean, people have raved about he's more than capable of doing the job, but you see guys with less experience getting the nod in there and that's the thing it's definitely well, <laughs> unsettling. And, and a lot of times, you know, you'll sit back and say, I just hope they're picking the best candidate. That's how mm -hmm. I've always thought this whole time. Right. So I hear, I think sometimes it comes across uh, whenever the media and people are talking about it, like deaf ears, because right. I'm naive. I'm just thinking it's the mm -hmm. best guy anyway, but I've had the privilege of having conversations yeah. with you and you've kind of talking about just how things are structured and I don't see that, but now my eyes are open a little right. bit and now I'm like, all right, so there is a problem. Let's, mm -hmm. let's take that away and just right. say, all right, I hope the best coach, the best candidate is getting mm -hmm. hired, but maybe that's necessarily not the case. Maybe Correct. I'm wrong in my perspective there. So how do we fix the problem? Right. And I'm kind of with you that, man, is this necessarily the best <laughs> way? It it almost has the reverse effect, I think. I, I, I agree, man. And I said to myself, okay, I don't know which part would be worse. You pass the rule. And you hire somebody and then they just keep pumping it that this is the only reason why this guy was hired, undermining everything that he's more than qualified to do. Or you get the 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 side where they're like, we're not about to switch up and start hiring these guys or we're not even going to pass this. And now it makes you think back to, well, man, you we all can agree that there is a, a large disparity in terms of minority coaches and GMs. But by you voting this down, are you essentially saying that there is not a problem right now? Because then it kind of goes back to the same thing we're talking about. Okay, we're all going to just supposed to turn a blind eye or be naive to the fact that when you look on paper, there is an issue right here. So that's the thing for me, man, I think is so unique about the situation. Right. And it, I was looking up some people uh, like analysts and whatnot. They were given suggestions and there were some that saying like, you know, players should say, I'm not going to this team because if you look at the percentages of hires that they've mm. made, 
they don't have enough minority hires mm-hmm. there. But then at the same time, if you're going to go out there and make a stand like that, that's saying the people, just because of the people they have in the mm-hmm. organization is making their hires based off of race. Mm-hmm. And you can't really prove that. There's a lot of gray yeah. there. It so, definitely is. So putting that reputation yeah. on a team, it's like, all right, that's, yeah. I don't know if that's the best strategy Correct. either. Um, and then you have, I was hearing something about making coaching more incentivized where you do have 70, what's it, 70, 72, 73 mm-hmm. percent of players in the league that are minorities, right. m- mostly black. Mm-hmm. Um, like there should be more incentive for them to get into coaching, but then we just prefer that there's a lot of assistant coaches it, and position coaches them, that yes. are black. So I didn't think that m- really made too much sense either. Mm-hmm. Um what it Lewis Reddick was saying something. Did you watch that video? No, I that didn't. That there should be almost like job fairs, conferences, because one of the things is that it's just probably a matter of fact that most of the players, actually we're not really talking about players, but uh, position coaches mm. that are minorities, you know, or even just people that are trying to get into coaching that are minorities, they don't have the same upbringing as the people making decisions, like correct. owners and GM. Mm-hmm. The majority of them, because I think all the owners in the league are white, correct? Yes. So what's up, uh, Shad Khan Jackson? Okay, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> that is like a familiarity thing that is probably a, a big reason yeah. as to why you know these coaches aren't getting hired. Um, and, you know, you want to point to, man, could it be the race thing? Mm-hmm. But then at the, in the back of the, in, yeah. or at the end of the day, I think you're just going with who you, who are, who you're more familiar with in terms well, of background. And I was going to say, stuff, you know, even the background part of it, sure. But I know a lot when it comes to the coaching hiring element, a lot of it is more familiarity. Like when you listen to some of these coaches, like when they're hiring their staff, they're like, yeah, I've worked with this guy here multiple times, or I've been with this guy multiple times. Some of these coaches and GMs have known each other from, okay, well, this GM, he was, you know, in this department prior to that, we had interactings. And then from there, they already built a relationship. So I know that does play into it. And I mean, that's just in in life in general. You want to hire people that you're more comfortable with, that you're more familiar with. But I think the biggest... Situ- I guess the biggest issue right now is just when you're basing it off that criteria. I think if every hire was like that, that's one thing. But when you're starting to see guys that, who don't even have relationships I was gonna with say, these guys that's the thing getting hired. We, that's the thing we don't know. We're just right. assuming with that. Correct. But then if, if the Because familiar- there have been situations <clears throat> where there was no familiarity, there was no relationship, and guys were getting hired. And- First, like I said, they, they oh, he's a quarterback. He was a quarterback's coach. Quarterback's coach. That was the big thing. But then when you see guys who are special teams coach, guys who are receivers coaches getting head coaching nods, you're like, whoa. I mean, this dude right here is proven in the NFL what he can do as a head coach. Or he was highly successful as a position coach, but he's not even. I mean, when you look at how they'll interview one guy, but they already have made the hire essentially like the next day. Like they already have the little hey, man, I got you. We're going to do, but we have to do this first before I can hire you mm-hmm. type thing. It, it doesn't really come off as genuine in terms of the practice that they're going about. But I, I mean, for me, first off, the fact that you got to have a rule. <laughs> I mean, when you think about that, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. But right. it is the way that, I mean, the world that we're living in and have lived in throughout these years, that is something. And a lot of people get uncomfortable when, we, when you talk that racial undertone and things like that. You can't say the R word. You can't say, ah, oh, why has I always got to play that card? But when you're just looking at the facts of it throughout the history of the NFL and the history of the country, it is something that is prevalent. And obviously it still is going on. So I do think it, do, it does need to be addressed, but I think it's, I don't know if this is the correct way to go about it, you know? Yeah, that is the question. How? Because it goes back to probably a lot of other stuff in society. It's more of a system thing. Mm-hmm. Because if you try to point at one team, one person, right. you can't really do that. Correct. Because one hire, you know, this team hiring this person, you say, oh, it was, you know, you right. didn't hire because of race. Mm-hmm. It's like, nah, I, I did it for this, this, and right. this reason. And you can't really calculate yeah. that at Very all. Very true. So the system is in place. Because I bet you if you go to each team, and say, because there's what, we just talked about it, three yes. or four minority mm-hmm. coaches, but if you went to each team that doesn't have a minority coach right. and said, hey, you know, was race a part in your head coach hiring process, well, everyone would say no. Not a chance. So what? <laughs> Who would admit that? Yeah. Right. So, and, and that, But I think, 
well, I was going to say, I think less about asking is race the reason why, but more so, did you feel this guy was more qualified than okay. this guy and why? I think that's more the thing that I know from my perspective, because I don't mind, like you said, if guys are getting hired and they're more qualified, sure. But when we're talking about guys who have zero experience in that role versus another guy who's had a ton of success in a role or a guy who's been just as successful or more successful in their position coach role. Why, 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 why is that difference like that? That's the thing that I'm more curious about in terms of how do you figure that out? I mean, because when it comes to trying to say race is the biggest reason why people aren't hiring people, that's like tough to prove yeah i mean you talk about like really trying to say hey you aren't doing this because of that and i feel like that's a lose lose whenever that's brought out because you say that and then the person or the organization Uh it's like defense is like no it's not the case at all Mm -hmm. i didn't even i I didn't want this to be a part of any of the hiring process from a league standpoint it puts a black guy on that team it puts a black guy on the nfl yeah so when it comes to that, it's very sensitive in terms of how you go about doing it, how you go about accomplishing it. And like I said, I understand the you want more diversity. I definitely understand that part. But like I said, just the method is is very unique in terms of how they're going to have to go about doing it. But I don't think you say, well, let's not change anything and just go status quo. Because right. I don't necessarily think that's the best move either. But at the same time, it's... I just feel like some people get frustrated by it because when you look at, even when you make the initial hire, right? Say you go a person that's not a minority, their leash seems so much longer in terms of they're able to have multiple seasons of underwhelming performances. We've seen it in the league. We talk about it all the time. Man, that organization sucks. They keep those coaches down for too long. But then you look on the flip side with minority coaches, historically, their leash is a lot shorter, even when they're highly successful their leash is a lot shorter. And that's something that always makes people bring that back up. Like, well, why is that? Why, 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 why is it that this guy can have one bad season? You want to fire him, but this guy over here has been there for three years and it's been trash, but it's okay though. Like those are some of the things that make people bring that up even more so in that regard. No. And, uh, well, going back to your point though, with, saying why you made the hire mm-hmm. that was another thing that i i was looking up someone was suggesting like if someone has if the gm or the the person making the right. hiring decision wrote out exactly why we made this decision mm-hmm. versus this coach or yeah. you know just in general what qualifications or why do you think this person is the best fit for the team could that help where you actually like really have to explain it out? I don't even think that would help because I'm, I'm thinking back to like a corporate setting. And if you get HR it. involved, like that, that's just, that gets annoying. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? And you don't want to be dealing with that. You know, you just want to be like, I made the hire, I made the hire. I'm trying well, to move and, on. And I look at it like this. Let's be real. Anybody that's good with words, good <laughs> with explaining things, right. they can write down the most beautiful monologue about why this guy was hired over this guy qualified or not as long as you know what you're trying to hey these are the points i want you to hit heavy man you could take anything and make it a beautiful thing where you're like man this dude wasn't that bad actually all right (laughs) i know he's never had any type of success he's never coached a pro bowl player as a position coach i got all that but this dude i like him after reading this so even with that i still feel like it doesn't really do anything from a justification standpoint or an explaining if anything it'll just become an annoyance and put that that thought into the person's mind that has to write this up. It's yeah. like, man, I have to write this up over something I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in the back of your mind or not, like right. actually knowing if you were thinking, cause I don't, I don't know. I think everyone has their, their biases and stuff Correct. like that, that no one knows about, but you know, if, is it at the forefront or not in making that decision, you would say no. Yeah. Right. Um, now my question is then what, what is the solution from your perspective? Mm. See, that's the issue, man. So, like I said, I do think you have to come up with some type of incentive just because so you, for so long, this has been the status quo. I mean, you think about even when the Rooney Rule was uh, created, there still hasn't been no more than five, six coaches that are minorities in a season. It's 32 teams in the league. You do the math on it. That's not a lot. And the number goes down each year. And then it got to the point where the number of interviews were going down like that's 
for me, I think that's showing a trend of it going in the wrong direction. Now, if this was every year, you know, you're, you're getting five, six, well, five, six minority coaches having a chance to interview for these head coaching spots, for these GM spots, that's different, but that hasn't been the case of lately. And I know people will, when you're trying to, I guess, tear down the argument, right? Well, they'll point to the Marvin Lewis's or the Hugh Jackson's. And it was like, these are one-off situations in terms of coaches having a longer leash, coaches having tenure at places, right? But I said for every one Hugh Jackson, every one Marvin Lewis, we could point to 10 of the non-minority coaches who have way better situations for them with far less success. And even once they are fired, they still get more opportunities. Right. I mean, we, we, we talked about that. Like, man, this dude sucked here, but you know he got fired here. And, what well, he got hired, what, two weeks later to go down here? We can point to different coaches in, in both conferences, AFC and NFC, that have had these type of situations happen. So it's just when you're trying to put a spotlight on what exactly the reason is, it's hard to figure it out because it's like, well, in this situation, okay, I can understand that. But this, 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 and this situation, it doesn't make any sense at all in terms of your method. Kind of like when we joke about the arguments we have, right? How, man, you said it was this we're talking about, but now you're to move the goalpost to this, this, and this. Like, which one is it? That's what it comes off with this when, when they're doing their hiring process. First is this criteria. All right. Then once you start pointing out, well, these guys have that criteria. Well, then it's, well, it's this and this and this criteria. And then when you start, okay, well, these guys have that. Then it's back to, oh, no, no, it's this over here. So it's hard to really figure out <clears throat> what it is that minority coaches should be doing to even prepare themselves for that role. I mean, if there's a specific set of things that owners are looking for, Put it out there so that way coaches can prepare themselves and make sure they're starting to check those boxes in line. So when they do take mm -hmm. that next leap forward, now, okay. It's you like, yo, I did this, this, right. and this, and I did this. Correct. Even, like, I want the extra right. mile with this stuff. Whereas stuff. right now, it's the whole mystery of, well, do you want winning culture? Or do you want a guy who's able to motivate? Do you want a guy who's a player's coach? you want a guy who's more of the disciplinarian? I mean, these are all the things you're factoring in. Do you want a guy who's had a lot of success as a position coach? Or you want a guy who's strictly been coordinator? List it. Like, what's the rule to get to the head coaching? Right. <laughs> because it's flipped a little bit here. Yeah, it all has. All of a sudden, yeah. it's the QB guru. Q a QB guru or, or, hey, man, I like this guy. He was in college, man. He lit it up. I like this guy. And then, But then, on the other hand, you have New York Giants with Joe Judge who special team yeah. and he's more of i know how to lead the group and, and get everything organized <laughs> right because the other guys are qb gurus mm -hmm. or you know this offensive uh yeah. schematic type of person mm -hmm. where then you have judge so i i think that's but if it flips every five to six years just mm -hmm. on the nature of how the nfl is going mm -hmm. the actual play on the field of yeah. what do i need then that's that's even hard to calculate yeah. as well <laughs> it is but man. i like that idea of it's like all right, this is this is what we're looking for. Yeah. Perform above and beyond, and it's mm -hmm. like you know what, what type of excuse do we have then? Right. It's weird, man. I think I think at the end <laughs> of the day, yeah, I think we both definitely don't like the the idea that they're doing right, right. now. I feel like that's too heavy handed to come in here with this approach of we're moving up draft picks and things like that. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. At the same time, as much as you know, we don't really like it. At least it, they're throwing something out, right? No, no. I, it, I mean, because this, this could, this could yeah. get declined right. because everyone's like, you know, we don't like this idea right. at all, but what's something better? Right. I don't know, man. Because it, uh, it, it, it goes back to the whole system thing. Is I don't even know how effective, like Lewis Reddick was saying, with the job fairs and the mm -hmm. conferences to build some type of familiarity with right. coaches, owners, and GMs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there could be like a week thing where everyone yeah. goes out and you know a golf resort, everyone's kicking something, it. And yeah. I don't know because maybe that that could be something. Yeah. At least at least that maybe is well, is getting would, to the root of and things. You would get a chance to have these minorities interacting with these owners and GMs I actually, in, in an informal what? setting versus the traditional. Hey, we're going here to do an interview because we all can agree an interview setting is totally different than a conference setting or a golf setting or whatever other activity you could be doing. It's drastically different in terms of the formalness associated with it, the comfort level that you're able to have some of these conversations, you really get a chance to know a person. Whereas in an interview, even if it's an hour long interview, you're not getting a chance to really know those individuals like that because everybody's putting on their front, you know? 
Yes, I'm perfect. Oh, yes, I'm perfect as well. I think that might be the idea right there, man. What's I think that? I think I might have something. Oh, the, the a, conference? A, a go, no, a golf resort <laughs> week or uh, or a resort week, actually. Mm. Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be yeah. golf because there, there are going to be people that mm. don't like playing golf. But, like, no. you get everyone together and then mm. you just force everyone yeah. to mix it in and, and, and mm-hmm. get involved, get some drinks. Get some drink. Okay. I don't know. I, a little so, social lubricant and people uh-huh. are talking. It's, okay. it's just a good time. I, could hey, that be something or no? It, if it led to hires... I'm with it. it. I mean, we might not know till four or five <laughs> years. Down the line. Like. <laughs> and the other problem is just time. Are we? Is this going to be a, a thing where if you are in these positions yeah. or if you're looking to but wait be a, minute, a coach, though, wait a minute, you got to go to this conference. Time on time on time on because we already have something like that. Really, the owners' meetings. The owners' meetings. They have the coaches and the owners down there together. They typically All coaches, take a week. Is it just head coaches? Ah. Uh, that's what I mean. That's we, what I have to look into. We, we'd more. have to get people but that are aspiring to be head coaches. I got to move check up. that part because I do know. Oh man, because the competition committee is just head coaches with I think one or two. It might be one or two owners on there, but I want to say during the owners meetings, it's. I want to say all the coaches are down there for these. Oh man, I got to look into it more. <laughs> it's all good. The only reason why I know because um, well, my experiences. Whereas even when I signed here my first time in 14, we were doing the deal for me to get here. But at the same time, I still was having to wait because Coach Tomlin, uh, Colbert, all those guys were down in Florida for these meetings. Okay. And that was the reason I was like, oh, okay, now I'm catching on to seeing how this thing works. And every year, they're always down there for these meetings. And that's why I was like, well, maybe they're already doing that. Like I said, I don't know the full extent in terms of who all is allowed in there, whether it's just head coaches, whether it's coordinators. Or even how informal right. it is. Like, I don't know all that, but I do know they're down there for, is it a week? It might be a week. Okay. Yeah, so that I know that element is there. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Maybe they need to spice it up a little yeah. bit, though. But it still makes me mad because I think to myself sometimes, like, okay, the aspiring coaches, yes, you mm-hmm. would want those. But I look at how many head coaches are recycled. I mean, in terms of this guy was the coach here, and he's going to get two or three stops somewhere else, even when he's not being successful. Are we talking just head coaches or also Well, mainly head coaches. Mainly head coaches. Some of the coordinators, obviously, they definitely... Because there's a lot of people that go from coordinator, head coach, back to like a high coordinator right. position. I mean, you think, uh, was it Todd Haley? He was one, right? Yeah. In terms of going head coach, coordinator, coordinator again, like he's staying in that type of role. Yeah, but the I guess the tough thing yeah. is, though, Haley's a good coordinator, yeah. too, at the same time, right? Well, it depends on who you're asking. Are you asking Browns True. fans or are you asking Steelers fans? <laughs> uh, me as a Steelers fan, I thought he did yeah. well. But you're right. As as a Browns coordinator, that, that right. definitely flopped. So it was like, which, and that whole, I always joke well, about, I, I, I mean, I, anybody I, could be a good coordinator when you got the killer bees, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get the ball to him. You, know, you, you hand the ball off to him. Listen, y'all protect this guy. We're good. You know what I liked, him right. extending Ben's career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No. But I mean, I guess after his Brownston, he's not yeah. in the league. So I mean, like, he people, proved. Think, I, I think about just to, just to <laughs> take it a step further. Randy Feigner in seven, it was in eighteen, right? People were like, "Oh man, the offense hasn't missed a beat. It's still going. It's fine." Ben gets hurt. <laughs> Randy Feigner isn't qualified. He sucks. He's a terrible coordinator. We need to fire him. Think about it, bro. Just the year prior to that, oh, we haven't missed a beat. We're fine. No Le'Veon looking with James Connors doing A B still here. Juju, we're good. Was Fainter even the coordinator? That's how much that's how much yes. attention I was paying yeah, to the coordinator exactly. at that time. <laughs> exactly. And, and nobody had a problem with him being coordinator and quarterbacks coach in 18. They didn't have no problem with that. Last year, all of a sudden, is man, you need to either have a quarterback's coach or a coordinator. You can't have these dudes doing it both because now you're seeing the results right here. That's all I'm saying, bro. Understood. Yeah. There, so, although I did say, you know, Haley, I thought was a good coordinator. There is definitely, to your yeah. point, where people are getting bounced around and you're just like, how's this guy still in the yeah. league? Like, come on. Absolutely. Jeff Fisher comes to mind for me. I, that was <laughs> not to take a shot at him. I mean, he's, yeah. he had a good run with the Rams there a little bit, but mm. then, or no, I'm sorry. No, 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 not the Rams because he was on the Rams he was and on the, the, Titans. With the Titans. He had a better stint with the Titans. Yeah. But uh, that kind of washed out, yeah. and then he was – I just don't know how he was in the league. Yeah. But anyway. True, true. <laughs> I mean, like you said, you could go down the list of you know coaches that have had kind of – they've burnt out at one spot in terms of not being successful, then they go somewhere else. And it's like, oh, man, how did he get that job right away like that? 
I think two people that come to my mind were obviously Andy Reid. It worked out in the end for Andy. But remember when he left Philly, people were like, man, this dude is done. Like, he doesn't have it like that. Then he got hired, I think, what's in, what, five days of leaving Philly to go to Kansas City? I guess City. all it takes is just that one yeah. team, though, going mm-hmm. back to the NFL draft and right. picks. If if this NFL team viewed Andy Reid as the mm-hmm. elite head coach, right. then they're trying to get him yeah. as quick as possible. Well, then I even thought Jacksonville with Doug Marone. Ja- uh, when, See, when I, never, I never really thought he was a good coach, so I don't know why he's still in the league. <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves <laughs> Buffalo. He actually left, took the contract. Like He had a buyout on his contract. So he literally takes it, like leaves abruptly. And sits out the year just to make sure he still gets his guaranteed portion of his money so he couldn't get fired. Bills end up hiring Rex Ryan. Soon as the the guaranteed portion of his contract ends, like I want to say it was an offseason later because he technically couldn't coach because he would have lost that money. A year later, Jacksonville hires him. He was like, dude, this is this is unique right here. Like, not everybody thinks, like you said, that he's a good coach. No, I definitely And didn't. he wasn't the most successful coach in Buffalo. He, yeah. I mean, did they go eight and eight, nine and seven, maybe in Buffalo with him? I don't even know. Nine I'm seven. trying to think. No, no, no. So he, my, I think my no, because he wasn't the coach there then. It was McDermott. I don't think he had a winning season there. Because I know when when he was my coach, we our best record with him was six and ten. He provided a spark though, maybe. Debatable. That's how that's how desolate Buffalo was, and no, nah, that's debatable, bro. <laughs> no, I'm not saying Re- it's Re- true. Re- Rex provided a spark in terms of <laughs> that element of it. You know what I mean? You you Listen, go there, but yeah, bro. I'm not saying it's yeah. true. I'm saying it it might have been what yeah. the narrative was. That's all, dude. Because I was like, whoa, uh, and he went to Jack. I'm like, oh, all right, interesting, very very interesting, <laughs> man. Yeah, dude. I don't, I don't know. It, it goes back to the whole what we were saying about the. Uh, just the system and, and yeah. what could we point to? Because we've talked about this before. Everyone likes to point the finger at, at mm-hmm. one thing like, all right, this is the reason. It's, right. it's easy to consume and say, all right, this is it. Let's just fix this. Right. But when it's something in, along these lines, it's tough. It is, man. It is. And it's the thing that not everybody wants to talk about. No. I mean, you even look at the proposal. It still was, I mean, it was a headline. I didn't even know about it. I mean, you texted me about it. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, it it still (laughs) wasn't as, they didn't pump it out there because that's I wonder if they're talking about it today, though. That's the thing. Because that was on Friday, right? No. Middle of Friday it came out? It it was either Thursday or Friday. Really? Yeah, so for me, I'm like. If it was Thursday and the amount of traction it got Friday, then that is a little surprising. Well, because for me, I look at it like this. Because there was only like a couple stations that I saw. I was looking up research and everything. Well, and my thing is this. I said, let's be real. It's not a lot of news going on right now in terms of sports. So this is still something major in terms of what it could do in terms of changing the outlook of the NFL and the incentives of these organizations. So you would think it would be talked about more. But... People get uncomfortable when they have these conversations. Let's be real about it. I mean, anytime you talk racial tension, social injustice, they don't want to talk that. That that, that makes people very uncomfortable. Regardless of if you're a minority or not, people aren't really fond about these conversations. I think it's just you you like what you know and you don't want to move off that. Wait, and we had it. that conversation before as well. I mean, just through our time together off the mic where it's like, oh man, I understand like from a hey, I've never seen this, so you don't think these type of things go on, and then you point to it and you show it, and it's like, whoa, like I had no clue it was really like that. Yeah. So that, I think, does play a role in this right now in terms of people kind of, hey, man, if I don't see it, then it's not really happening. But when you put a spotlight on some of these things, it, do, it does make people start to feel uncomfortable about it. Yeah, and I think what a lot of people would want is an example of mm-hmm. like, hey, you know, in this right. case or that case, but then... It's hard to say this case or that yeah. case just because but, it's all gray. You don't but know. There what has been times. Behind. There has been times where spotlights have put on been put on certain things like that, and, and not necessarily the hiring element of it, but some of the racial issues and stuff like that. And we saw how that turned out as well. Oh, you talking about Kaepernick? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we saw. It. So, so we know people say it, but they don't necessarily mean it. We do know that part. So, hold on, who are you talking about? I'm just saying in general, like people will say, hey man, we want things to be free, we want oh, diversity, yeah, yeah. we want to know, like if there's something going on, like tell us. Not all the time they really want to know that. Even the NFL, like I'm not even going to put it on fans. Like NFL, I mean, I've said in plenty of meetings where they tell you, man, speak up. If there's an issue, talk about it. Man, use your platform. That's 
use your platform. That's what they say. But remember the whole, when we talked about the Kaepernick thing, we're not going to go down that route. Right. But that was one of the biggest issues people had, right? Why are you doing it at the workplace? Why are you using your platform at the NFL games? We've sat in meetings for nine years. I did personally. And they tell you every time, every year, use your platform, use your voice. If you want to do it while you're up here in the interview, you do it. If you want to, if you want to do something that you can get away with, it's not going to necessarily get you fined for like a uniform violation. But if you want to express yourself like that, do it. Big on it. Do it. Do it. Take a stand. We're leaders. We're cultural. That's what they say. You're cultural leaders mm-hmm. until you do it in it's not the most popular opinion makes people uncomfortable. And then you see how that whole situation played out. Yeah. The, yeah. The tough part about that. And I hope it doesn't go the path yeah. with this is the message is sent out. And then, <laughs> right. And then there's, there's backlash uh-huh. to the message. And then the message changed. Well, well, there's that. And then there's also backlash to the backlash. Like it, it's yes. almost like butting heads uh-huh. of like, what are we going for here? Mm-hmm. If it, I think if we could just go from the standpoint of like, this is happening. Right. All right. I'm listening to that. I want to mm-hmm. learn. I want to learn about this. How could we make this better as right. opposed to having the backlash? Mm-hmm. And then because that just makes people Correct. offensive. It just it, it's yeah, just a big calamity just, with it. Yes. Right. So you're hoping that we could get something going with this. It's a little more, you know, just civil and we can have a nice back and forth, right. or, you know, dialogue and, right. and that type of stuff. So. Hey, man, fingers crossed. But like you said, the one benefit is they are having a conversation. They are at least attempting to do right. something. So that is a plus in that regard. But then I, I was thinking about this. I was listening to someone and they, they brought up black quarterbacks just throughout mm. history. Yeah. And you look now, uh, how many guys we got? We got yeah. a lot of guys and they're really successful. Mm-hmm. So what has been that path? It's just been these dudes get in the position and mm-hmm. they, then they start balling out. The problem is you don't want to have a situation where looking back on maybe the 70s, 80s, even 90s, where mm-hmm. you have qualified candidates missing out on an opportunity. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're just like, all right, if you're balling out, if you're an awesome candidate, like that's always what should shine through. But at the same time, you only have one life and you only have so many opportunities. You don't want to have someone that is qualified missing out. So that's something to consider, I guess. Definitely is, man. Yeah. Definitely is. But it is what it is for right now. So hopefully things change, man. We'll keep everybody updated on it. Consider my golf outing resort. Yeah, man. (laughs) More booze, more booze. Yeah, for better or worse. Yeah, get some get some foursomes out there. Scramble, gambling at the casino. Yeah. I don't know. I, there's there's things you can do, baby. I don't. Know. I just get a little nervous out of the thing. I'm like, this could go really left, or it could go really good. I think it could go good, <laughs> or it could go really bad. That's what I'm saying. We both know how people get sometimes when they have that lubrication in them. Sometimes their true feelings start to come out. You don't know. I'm not saying anything, but it could it could go really left. That's all I'm saying, man. It could. Hey, it's a, hey, it's, it's a step, though, man. Sometimes you need like a, yeah. like a breaking point. Yeah, yeah. You I want you, man. You need something to go. Just I like this you, idea. It's like yeah. it's not the best idea, but maybe it's a step. Hey, it's not the worst, though. We we it could be worse. <laughs> so <laughs> take it for what it is, man. Yeah, take it for what it is. But speaking of taking it for what it is, the players. NFL players, man, they have a unique thing that's potentially in the works right now, man. So um, let's see. Stephen A., I think he, Stephen A. Smith was the first one, I think, to bring it up. But also there was, oh, I forgot who the kid plays for. Maybe the Saints. He was on uh, Golick, uh, Mike Golick's radio show. And they were talking about some different ideas in terms of if this COVID-19 uh, yeah, no, thing continues on, potentially with the players could do NFL players could do to make sure their season goes on without any hiccups and something that has been floated out as an uh, as a idea are the players signing waivers that would essentially take all responsibility away from the teams if these players were to contact or or contract COVID-19 throughout this whole process so for me, man, at first I was like, yo, this is this is out of control right now, man. Like just the thought of me saying I'm gonna sign something to completely take all responsibility away for you, for me to go out here and play. I thought for me, just off just initially thinking of it, I wasn't a fan of that. I think that when you're talking about COVID-19, there's still so many uncertainties about it. You don't know the long-term effects of it right now. We don't know if you can get it multiple times. We don't know. I mean, they they over uh, now, I don't want to say over sensationalized, but they 
pump out all the time the deaths associated with it and things like that, how it strongly affects older the older generation and some of the younger generation. And when I think of it, I'm just like, man, if it's something that's this crazy where it had the whole country shut down, actually not the whole country, the whole world was shut down. I don't know necessarily if I would be so gung-ho to just say I'll sign a waiver because I really want to play football that bad right now, knowing the uncertainties that we know right now. Like for me, I just, I just made me real uneasy about that. Did you uh, switch your tune though? Like you said initially, that was your reaction. No, did you, did so, you think about it more? I've been thinking about it and I still, I'm falling in the middle because I said to myself, I think we had this conversation off air in terms of which stage of my career I'm in. Mm-hmm. If I am six round draft pick and this is between year mm-hmm. one and four, I'm a lot more, put it like this, I will be more open to the idea in terms of having the conversations about it, in terms of looking into how this thing could work. If it's year six through nine, Man, I'm not even talking to you right now because for me, I'm like, I'm weighing my money versus the risk, not only for me, but for my family as well. And I'm not even about to take that chance. Like, it's not even, in fact, I might say some unsavory things to you if you even presented this opportunity to me because I'm like, man, not only do you not care about my health, but you don't care about my family self either. If you would even think that this is something that I would do. So that's why for me, it's like, the more I think about it, it's still just right down the middle because I have I was blessed enough to experience both sides where you are highly paid, but I've also experienced where you're not highly paid. You're not a top 10 draft pick. You're not a top three round draft pick. So your money situation is drastically different. Those perspectives change a lot. But if I'm just thinking to myself, if you're a Russell Wilson, for example, you're supposed to get 30 something million dollars this year. In, when you just made 20 something or 30 something last year are you really willing to sign a waiver saying that hey man if i catch this COVID 19 now granted i don't know if i'm a survivor or not from because you know it appears to be 50 50 the way they they promote it now not saying that that's factual but the way they promote it is that oh man if you get it you might live you might die you don't know and you might give it to somebody else that you really care about if i'm scheduled to make 30 million dollars and i just made 30 million dollars last year you think he's really excited to take that chance? That's a life or death move. Not only for him, but for his kids, because he does have young kids. That's the thought process a little bit. When you're talking about 50-50, are you talking about just how it's how it's being presented? How it's been presented, yeah. Okay, because like, mm-hmm. just at the end of the day, right, it, These mm-hmm. the athletes, they're at a really low risk. Yeah, but remember, it's, it's not necessarily about <clears throat> the athlete themselves dying from it. It's who they could potentially give it to. Right. Whereas if you have young kids, they say young kids are high risk, grandparents, older population are high risk. Mm-hmm. A large majority of the NFL has younger kids. So, Deke, it might not affect you directly, right, right. but you go home to your son and if, now- If the, the young kid or the grandparents get it, then it's, you know, you yeah. never know what could happen. Right. And now you're asking yourself, was it really worth it? Now, there's a couple of things that I, I wanted to bring up or even yeah. ask you about. What difference does a waiver make? What difference does a waiver make? In terms of, yeah, getting, getting, contracting this mm-hmm. and then potentially passing it on to people. So the waiver is this. So I mean, you're taking the NFL liability out of it, yeah, but, but at the end of the day, you're just, you're not trying to get that COVID thing passed to anyone anyway, no, no, right? The, the whole purpose of the waiver is no different if, when I was still in my football camps, right, you would have every kid sign a waiver. You're not saying that I want you to get hurt. I'm not saying that at all. But what the waiver does, it protects me and my assets. So if you do go out there and get hurt, you can't sue me. You have to say that, hey, I knew what I was coming here to do. Yeah, I broke my leg and I probably can never walk again. But I can't sue you because I signed the waiver. I knew what I was doing. So say in the, I mean, you you hope God I mean, would you pl- Would you play without a waiver though? That's what I mean. Well, this is the thing. You they're they're making they're, the way that it was presented is you wouldn't be able to do anything if you did not sign the waiver. Okay. So no waiver means you can't go out there and play. Okay. If you want to play, you have to sign the waiver. Which makes sense, I think, right? See, for me, I don't think that because... So you, you're you saying you should be able to play without signing a waiver? No, no, no. I'm saying I wouldn't... Like, when you're talking about would you play without signing a waiver, I'm saying if it's going to come down to signing a waiver to play, I think that nobody should play because uh, okay. it's setting you up for failure. That's what I'm saying. It's different. Like Even when we're talking these football camps that I would do, right? Even if somebody were to die out there, I would still protect it asset-wise. And you have to do that because obviously some people, they like to fake 
injuries and fake things just to sue people. And we've seen this. I mean, it happens anywhere when you're a person with a little bit, well, when you're a person with a more financial benefits versus somebody else, you know, that's some of the things that they do. But for the NFL, when you're talking about this COVID-19 thing, it's like you, it's, it's not a guess of, hey, if one of you guys get it. Because, I mean, you look at just the UFC, the past two events they've had. Somebody has had COVID-19 and both of them. Now, granted, they've been able to pull them out before they interacted. But we also know that football, those numbers in terms of people in close proximity, triple. So it's not a question of if these guys, if somebody in the NFL is going to get it. We know that the percentages let you know that, hey, there's going to be some people that have it, period. So you know that somebody does is already going to have this day. But now by you signing that waiver, that's saying that, hey, man, if I get it and I give it to my kid and my kid dies, I can't sue you. I can't sue you, NFL. I can't sue you guys for this. Knowing the the, the heartache that this has caused, knowing the financial strain is going to cause as well. Like, But I, I signed the waiver, so I can't sue. I can't do anything about it. That's now, not right to me. Now, here's the next step, though, with the waiver thing. Mm-hmm. And say you want to play. You mm-hmm. sign the waiver. You're going to play. And can't you... I, I feel like that is on the player, though, like his responsibility if he wants to stay away from his mm-hmm. kids and family. Right? Yeah. Like that is an option they could yeah, take absolutely. to where there's no shot of that happening, yeah. where that responsibility is on you then. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's something I think yeah. you got away as well. Mm-hmm. Do I want to take this extended period of yeah. time and not be with my kids and family? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, then how long do you have to wait till the season is over to be back with the kids and family. It's a lot of questions. And and like you said, if you're year one Mm -hmm. through four or five, you need money. um, You want money Mm -hmm. and you're not really set up that way. You don't have a young family. Hell yeah. Why, you know, why not play? I can easily Mm -hmm. isolate myself. I don't really have too many responsibilities or worries there. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe it's a tougher decision whenever you look longer into someone's career. Correct. Uh, Now, the other thing I wanted to ask though, is what's the difference do you think between this and a, concussion like everything that's been Mm -hmm. going on with the whole concussion thing where it's i don't know what the percentages are but it's got to be a pretty decent percentage to where Mm -hmm. if i play football i'm gonna have some some head problems Mm -hmm. you know compared to the covid which actually seems more of a short-term thing for Mm -hmm. the individual like we said we don't know what could happen Mm -hmm. if you pass it on to family members or not but there could be a way to deter you from doing that. Like I said, just isolate yourself. And yeah, I think the family. biggest thing is this, man. A concussion only deals with you. You can't pass a concussion along to anyone else. A concussion isn't going to kill you tomorrow. A concussion is going to kill you in two weeks. And even when we talk CTE, they still haven't been able to prove it in a living person. So that's all speculation still in terms of, well, is, is, is CTE only associated with guys who play football? What about soccer players? What about boxers? What about UFC fighters? What about the, the, the kid who's played all the way up to college and has had multiple concussions? We won't know until they're able to find a way to test people while they're alive. With COVID-19, we know for a fact you can get that today and you could die from it. It's simple. We know that you can get it and you could pass it to somebody and they could die from it. It's that simple. So that's the biggest difference for me when I when we talk concussion versus COVID-19. When we talk, hey, a guy knowing that, hey, I could get a concussion while I'm playing. Hey, I could potentially become paralyzed when I'm playing. Now, granted, the percentages might be lower for some of the others, but we know, okay, cool. That necessarily isn't life or death. And, and obviously, you know, you can potentially die on the football field. We got all that. But the percentages are extremely low. With COVID-19, as of right now, the chances of you contracting it are a lot higher. So that element is different. So the fact that the percentages of you contracting it is higher and the percentages of it being able to spread are higher, that I think is the biggest difference between the two from my perspective. Okay. But then I guess at the end of the day, it comes down to how are you going to spend your time off the field then though? I don't think it's about how you spend your time off the field. That's like saying, hey, we shouldn't quarantine because how are you going to spend your time when you're in quarantine? Like it's less about what you plan to do with your time and more so about how are we going to operate to make sure that everyone is safe as they can be? That's the perspective I take with it. Who are you talking? You talking about just I'm the talking players? players. I'm talking coaches because it's not just players that are affected. You look at how many coaches are in the league that are at risk in terms of their age and think about their families. It affects more than just players. I feel like a lot of times people just when we yeah, talk bring in, they bring up the coaches is players. Something that I mean, shoot, think, really up, think about the there. owners. Think about Mr. Rooney. You don't think Mr. Rooney is at risk? You don't think when you go down the list of these owners, how old they are, they're not at risk? 
So now you're telling the owner, hey, y'all sign these waivers. I'm not even going to show up, though, because I'm at risk. So I got to play it safe. OK, y'all take that risk over there. I'm going to chill at the house. You think that's right either? I don't know. That's that's a tough call because he's the owner. So he's mm-hmm. he's the, like the employer. He's the one paying. It's, yeah. it's all about you're what right. you're what you're willing to take as mm-hmm. you know as a player yeah am i willing to give my time and and this risk for the money mm-hmm. it's all it's all a weighing thing yeah. and mr rooney he's you know pretty set he's, yeah he's owns the team he's thinking man i could probably do what i want mm-hmm. and like like you said being an at risk goes back to the whole personal responsibility thing if that's his decision that mm-hmm. he's like man i'm at i'm at risk i just want to hang back yeah i'm set in this way you know i don't know yeah. i think it it, it I'm I'm kind of like it always it comes down to like the individual thing. Yeah. Like how are you gonna do all this and and, and well, manage your time and manage like who you, what people you see and yeah. all that type of stuff. Well, I do think a couple of things play into this too, man. In terms of if they were to go this route, because right now it's just been thrown out there. It hasn't been anything official. But if they were to do a vote, I don't want it to be like how with the CBA. Yeah, we all vote individually, but it's collectively. So even if you voted no, if but you, the majority 50, said yes. If 51 get right, it. Right, then, then yeah. y'all got to do it. I think it should be case by case. Hey, Deke, you want to do it? Great. You go out there and do it. If I don't want to do it, I don't have to do right. it. And I think it the should problem be that is, right. How does that affect next year then? Well, you're right. Because, all right, you don't want to do it. We're bringing in this dude that played Correct. in the XFL last year. Right. All right, he did so good for us. Are some you, of the your things. spot's gone Yeah. Now. Those are definitely some of the things that you weigh into that or even the compensation element of it. So do the people that are signing these waivers or the people that because even with the waiver element, it's hard to really go more into that. So just hypothetically, if there wasn't a waiver, would guys get paid more for hazard pay knowing that, hey, I'm going to be taking an extra chance with my life to perform for you, my owner, my employer and also entertaining. So do I get a pay increase for taking this chance? Is that something that is talked about as well? Or the guys who decide that, hey, I don't want to take that chance. Do they still get compensated or do they not get paid at all? Those are some of the things. And like you said, well, do do you have to worry about losing your job as well? It's a lot of factors that go into that. Yeah. This has put people in a tough spot, tough decisions. I don't know. Go ahead. Well, because I look at it like this too. Like, do you... (laughs) It's like... Are you going to get punished for doing what you feel is best for you and your family? Or are you going to get rewarded for ultimately putting your life at risk, taking more of a chance? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Catch yeah. 22 scenario there. Yeah. It definitely is. And I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying if the, if a player doesn't want to play like that's wrong or anything, I, I just think it's, it comes down to what you want to weigh. And it right. goes back to what you're saying. If you got the family and all that stuff and you feel like mm. you're set beyond football, man, I don't blame you for doing yeah. that. I, I don't at all. I think just, uh, eh, never mind. I was going to say at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I do kind of, I do kind of want football and I want my star players out there. Yeah, but. I mean, we all do. Let's be real. That's what makes the NFL, the NFL versus some of the other leagues the star players but i think it would be different if say, i would understand i would definitely understand as like, much as you're just i mean i want beckham out there i, I want right. like Cleo I say, if, we, if we went through the list of star players and they're like okay we're gonna have the nfl this year but no big ben no russell wilson no it's tom different. brady no odell like you said no juju you're just going down the list you're like man is this really football right now like as much as it is compared to the nba more of a mm-hmm. team organizational yeah. brand type of thing where fans are connected that way you still definitely have star oh, absolutely way more than the MLB at least so there is a connecting point there and it wouldn't be the same if yeah. a lot of the star players were sitting out yeah, or i even and i talked to you about this i said i, I even take Ray, a step further what about like the, from a coaching standpoint hey your team's out there but the head coach isn't there because he's at risk guy he doesn't want to take the chance yeah it completely changes the dynamic. yeah yeah and everybody thinks, oh, man, it's easy to coach until you see what it looks like without that coach, without yeah. that guy. You're like, dang, yo, this sucks. Or you end up losing some close games or a team that has super aspirations because certain players decide not to, not even the star players, but certain role players that you think is easy to just fill their spot and it's not necessarily. They say, hey, I'm not taking that chance. And now your roster completely has to shift. It's not the same. And you end up losing or wasting the season away. Those are some of the things as well that have to be weighed in. And when we're talking about how bad we want this thing or, you know, yeah, 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 sign that waiver so we can see this. Like, these are some of the things that you really have to weigh. The players have more power than 
I don't know, maybe the union gives them credit for or the players no. themselves, I think, in this scenario. This is the thing. Players always know they have power. The problem is because there's so many players, it's hard getting everybody on the same page. We saw that with the CBA vote. I mean, anytime a CBA vote is that close, it lets you know that, man, these guys understand the significance of the situation. They understand they have a voice, but trying to get everybody to vote on the same thing is tough to do. A lot of players. It's tough, right? It's different than basketball where you're only talking 15 guys on a roster. You're talking 60, 70, I mean, 90 during the offseason. The, the worst player in the NBA is still getting paid probably a couple million. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Whereas, and then you got middle tier players Correct. getting paid 15 to 20 uh-huh. million a year. Right. So, the money wise is drastically you're different. You're not really complaining too yeah. much on that. So, like you, the threat, the threat of a, a organization in the NBA saying, hey, we're going to find someone else to replace you. Okay, I'm going to take my $5 million and go somewhere else. Like, I'm not tripping. In the NFL, though, because there's so many people, if you're a middle tier or lower level guy on the roster, I tell you, hey, man, if you're not signing this, I'm going to go replace you. You don't have the luxury of just saying, well, I'm going to get picked up over here. Like, it doesn't work like that. This goes into, I don't know if you've ever seen that triangle. I've seen it. I haven't dissected <laughs> it too much, but there's that hierarchy of needs, right? Uh-huh. Once you take care of uh, money wise, then you want like certain other things, like social things and et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, that's, I think if you look at the NFL and the NBA, that's Mm -hmm. something that's going on right there. You know, if you're in the NFL, you're probably more focused on getting your money taken care of for the majority of the players in the league. Mm -hmm. Whereas the NBA, you're in the league for a few years, you're set. You're set, yeah. (laughs) You are paid and it's fully guaranteed. So you don't even have to worry about that. And that's why they're wearing probably about more different things in the Correct. NFL when they're talking about CBAs. Yeah. So there's that. I mean, obviously, revenue is going to be something. Correct. What type of split that yeah. you want there, but other things to consider. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's something, too, man. When you talk the revenue element, signing the waivers, coming back to play, how does the contract money get weighed out with that as well? Do I mean, does the market shift a little bit in terms of salary caps because you're not going to have all the other revenue resources coming in from the fans, obviously, with these oh, stadiums? Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that you have to weigh as well. <clears throat> yeah, dude. It's a lot, man. There it is, is a, a lot. lot, bro. There's a lot, dude. As much as I, I want to keep reading and, and hoping for, for things yeah. to get right. Trust me, you're not the only then, one. Then <laughs> you, you just, I guess you just never know because yeah. the, the problem is, is one person getting it and or let's just not even say one person let's say it it does spread like we're saying you get a few players on a team that Mm -hmm. get it and they have to uh sit out i mean how how much is the team that's supposed to play in the next week gonna want to necessarily play yeah well and and, (laughs) i mean i said just logistically so much that goes into it because you also have to make sure that even once these players sign this waiver you still have to make sure that they are getting tested Mm-hmm. and not just you testing when they first get there and that's it like week to week i feel like you need to because you're interacting with different players each week and then who knows how responsible these guys are during their time off right once the game is played on sunday are they just staying in the hotel room like i said if that yes. was the case yes. if that was the case earlier and what i was saying then yeah. we should be good we should be good but <laughs> hey <laughs> But no one's doing that. Not a chance. It's too much money involved. Guys are young. People want to have fun. So there's no way you're going to tell me a guy's going to sit in his hotel room, not interact with anybody but his football players and coaches for 17 weeks. I do not see that happening at all, bro. I think that goes back to the waiver thing. That's why the NFL wants to have yeah. the waiver where, all right, if someone else catches it, though, mm-hmm. that's on you at that right. point. But the 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 catch-22, other than you have to be a little bit careful, is this. If I sign that waiver and I know for a fact, well, shoot, if I get it, y'all ain't going to take care of me. No way. I'm going to really do what I want to do. And I might not even tell you. So now I'm just walking around with it. Now, hey, you tested me whenever the test was. Okay, cool. Is just you test me at the beginning. I'm going to do I what like I do anyway. I that's person being a jackass though, right? People aren't that? No, I know. But is, so that, on, is what? that on the NFL though? It doesn't matter who it's on. What is it going to look like? Public perception. When they see, oh, man, well... All that stuff spread it over there. Y'all made them sign this waiver. Y'all put them in this situation. What are y'all going to do to take care of them now? <laughs> you know how perception goes. We both know this. It's <laughs> not right, but yeah, I, I could see how the it, perception, perception would be ever that right. Way. It, I mean, when it comes to how the mass, the media, the 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 population, when they see something and they want to say, "Oh, that's the reason," or "This isn't right," even with them signing the waiver, you 
know the public outcry that would go to this and don't let it be a prominent person. See, it's different right now. Like with the UFC, some of the guys that have contracted it, they weren't your John Jones. They weren't your Conor McGregor's, your Habib, Norman Gameda's. They weren't those type of guys. So even though it was talked about, it was more so talking about the COVID, not the actual person. Mm -hmm. You imagine the, the outcry if Ben Roethlisberger had contracted it. Or if Tom Brady had attracted it and, oh, man, something bad happened after that. And there is, oh, man, they signed a waiver. though. Everybody's good. Hey, that's on them, guys. People would go nuts. They would not care about that t that person signing the waiver. They would go nuts. That's what I mean going back to the, what does the waiver even mean then if people are just going to go nuts anyway? Well, the waiver means that, okay, I understand publicly I'm the bad guy, but legally you have zero you can do to me. Right. That's what the waiver does. The waiver is important. Publicly can affect the bottom line potentially. It can, absolutely. I don't know. So that's the question. So it's like, uh, technically, do I have to pay? Do I need to send out any money for that person? No, I don't have to do anything by law. Now, will they probably do something to save face? That's a different conversation. But the initial, man, hey, you signed the waiver. I'm clean. Hey, take me to court. Your signature's right there, buddy. Take me to court. I'm not going to be on the outrage team, though, for sure. Okay, especially, yeah, well, especially well, with how I'm talking about but, it right now. I think that's it's, it's I think easy, that's on the player it's, it's, and how they easy, interact. It's easy right now to say that. It's different when it's happening. I don't know, dude. I think I think it's it comes always, down to it's the easy. player and how they spend their time. Though it's easy. If it's easy the ones, right here. If they're the ones making these interactions. Okay. okay. Knowing they tested positive uh -huh. for COVID, that's that's kind of okay. messed up. <laughs> okay. Is is easy in this controlled climate to say that? That's all I'm saying. Plenty of people talk about how, man, if I was in that position, I would say this, or I wouldn't do that, or, man, it's not that bad. Then when the mass get a hold of something, their tune changes. That's all I'm saying. I've seen plenty of people talk about, man, yeah, man, you got to stand up for social injustice, this, this, and this. And then when that opportunity does happen, I've seen them take a different approach. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and it doesn't matter their social standing either, financially or not. Like, I've seen it multiple times so that's why i'm telling you like it's easy for you to sit right here and say i want to change it in terms of how i feel i want to have an issue with that i want to start saying that this this guy's fault versus that guy's fault it's easy we won't know until we're in that position that's all i'm saying so don't let <laughs> I'm, that, I'm telling i'm telling y'all yeah. stay consistent but hopefully we don't have to right be in that yeah position. so that, that's all i'm saying man like because <laughs> it's different man it's different but that's a unique thing though man so We'll keep everybody tuning in that too, man. So, I mean, because that all oh, that came out last week. So, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we were that that hasn't been talked about either. No, nah, these topics yeah. have not been. But, talked but about. then again, there were some other headline news being you know put out there in terms of the James Harrison comments. I think that's why. Uh, yeah. That 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 dominated the the TV I and think media that's waves died for a, while. a little bit because it has. he he pushed it to the side a little bit. <laughs> Even though it's funny, man, when you really look into what he said, and people have said this. <laughs> He never denies it. <laughs> nope. He just simply says the intention. The inten one thing. Right, right, that's it. That's it. He's never paid me to hurt anybody. He's never compensated me to, to, to injure a person. That's all he said. He never said I didn't receive it. He still never said the contents of the envelope. And which is <laughs> which is what we were thinking in the first place. <laughs> so at least he mm -hmm. seems like he's more on the Steelers side than he's. Hey, <laughs> it's gonna be just brushed aside and. I'm with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're hoping. Yeah. That's what we're hoping. Nothing comes of it. Yep. That's uh, hey. Let, let's let's keep rolling with it, man. Keep rolling with it. That was an interesting, <laughs> interesting stretch of days there. But it definitely was, man. We'll see what happens. Interesting yeah. story too. Something I yeah, could man. take to the grave with me and just hey, that was that was a good one there. That was a good story. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so yeah other than that man i think this was good man this is a good combo informative dude. man yeah it. good good different opinions man so yeah it was yeah, good dude. i enjoyed it, it was good, um bro. hope everyone else enjoyed it too. yeah man and i'm sure some of our followers are going to be mad just because you didn't show enough taco meat today. nah come on dude you know you yeah man you've been showing a lot of taco no, meat lately uh, and now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden you got all your buttons time. up. Like, what's going on in here man i got you... like two or three down man. oh man I'm just, all right i'm just i'm just saying bro yeah, I got yeah. three down. I okay, got three right. down. Hey, 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 man. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just letting you know what the people want. Okay. They, they want, Deke is a sex symbol now. Jeez, oh, man. Dude. That's a lot of pressure on you, bro. That is pressure. Yeah, man. man. But you started, man. You started shooting videos with, with, with no shirt on, with a blazer. Like, you set the tone. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, I see him out today. Yeah, that, that sex symbol route, you know? 
Yeah, I yeah. guess. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Some people would say it's a little racy. <laughs> thought it was more of a joke, but <laughs> I could see how people would say it. Yeah, say man. It's a little sex symbolist. See? I don't know. You've had the glasses on, like fashion glasses. Now you walking no shirt on. You know what I mean? So hey, hey. Got you. But you know what? Our women followers are going up. So you know what, Deke? We no appreciate way. you, bro. No way. Just keep, hey, keep it, man. It's <laughs> 4.3 right now, man. We're going somewhere. <laughs> it was at 4.0. So, hey, step in the right direction. All because you Jeez, keep showing oh, it, man. Dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm the reason, though. Yeah, bro. Now, now you got to start showing up in, like, sleeveless shirts and stuff. You know what I mean? I got to work out again for that. <laughs> I got to wait till these gyms open up again. Oh, man. Who needs a gym, man? Get it in at the house. <sighs> they, don't there's ha- a they don't have way. the saunas there, man. Like that's actually the real reason I go to these gyms is the sauna. <laughs> that's a recovery, man. We we talk about yeah, you I know, but that's in, bro. that's my reward for my workout. <laughs> that's what I mean. I don't have that reward back uh-huh. in my house. I, I'm I've just been going for walks. Okay, I've been okay. doing my actual work. Fair enough, yet. man. Hey, health is wealth, man. So whatever you're doing, just make sure you're doing it. Yeah, that's it, man. I'm sticking with that. I like it. Sex symbol D. Thanks, like thanks, man. So you want you want to close this out? Sex symbol. Sure. Hope you guys all enjoyed the podcast. (laughs) And until next time. Peace.